one last time to the Tom Sawyer Show here on the Warriors Sports Network. Grant Wall joined, as always, by Winona State head football coach Tom Sawyer. And coach, season ended a couple weekends ago up at the Metrodome, Concordia St. Paul, uh, a game that the Warriors didn't play great on either side, side of the ball, uh, fell to the Golden Bears. Um, as you now look back on the season, you've had a week and a half to kind of decompress and, and let everything roll through your mind. What are the things that stick out most for you about this year of Warrior football? Well, I, th <clears throat> I think that uh, we, we had a lot, a very consistent year in uh, really trying to battle through uh, adversity. And it was just one of those years. That it happens in sport. It got us this year. It's happening to the Green Bay Packers. It's happening to the Minnesota Vikings. And it happened to the Warriors. And so um, some of that is, uh, you know, really disappointing because we really had high expectations. Um, and we always have high expectations anyway. But really with the kids we had coming back, a senior-laden team, um, you know, and a lot of those, some of those kids didn't play at all. Uh, in Theo Burkett and, and uh, Kyle English uh, didn't play a snap all year and of course John Taglin goes down in the first game so some of that is, is stuff that one you, you've got to find a way to overcome and we didn't um, and sometimes we did and, and when we had it going there in the middle of the season we really really did start to play well and in fact the one time I said oh there's what our football team looks like and that was we were on a four game winning streak at that time and and really felt comfortable that we were rolling again and, and uh, just didn't finish like we wanted to. But um, besides that, um, I think our seniors are leaving our program excited about their experiences here. They're all, all 14 kids are ready to graduate and moving on this year. Uh, so obviously program-wise, I, I feel pretty good about that. But uh, missed some opportunities. And I wish that we could have done a couple things differently. Uh, we need to do a better job from the coaching staff. Uh, we missed a couple kicks. We missed a couple first downs. And, and you give up a couple long plays, and you're 6-5. and five. That's how fast in this league it can happen. So we got to wash it off, uh, put it behind us, and uh, start working for the future. Uh, you, you mentioned all of the injuries, and, and it's hard when you have as many injuries as the Warriors had this year uh, to be consistent on a week-to-week -week basis because you're rotating so many new guys in. Uh, but there were times on both sides of the ball where you really saw exactly what Warrior football was all about. And we'll start on the offensive side. Um, but Jack Nelson, uh, a freshman, Really, really good passer, got the passing game going. And then he had Chichi Ojika, a guy who really carried a run game that was strong all year. Yeah, we thought, uh, well, first of all, you know, Jack Nelson coming in, you know, we didn't think we were going to play him at all. And all of a sudden after, you know, that first game uh, dismal uh, you know, appearance that we had, um, he stepped right in and took over like he'd been playing for five years. I mean, he was, he was very, very good. Uh, obviously a newcomer of the year and, and all kinds of accolades are coming his way. But more importantly is, is uh, we, we rallied around the young quarterback. Um, as we were going through a couple offensive line injuries, and and, uh, and then without Theo Burkett, another running back had to step up, and that was Chichi Ojika. And he's a kid that, that behind Rayon Simmons did a great job. And behind Theo, he was doing well. And when it was his turn, he, he went over 100 yards per game, uh, went over 1,000 yards on the year, um, did great in the kickoff return, was an all-conference player. I mean, all those things to a kid who's been in a, in a secondary role for us really did step up to the plate. Very proud of Chichi. And you had some young wide receivers who played exceptionally well. Josh Micus, Alan May, Cameron Johnson, Tony Mueller. Uh, a group that comes back all. I mean, they, all of those receivers are back next year. Um, how excited are you, especially at that position, with that skill and, and that level of ability coming back? Well, you get very excited about it when you know you have your skill coming back. And, and you know, plus the tight end, Alex Jensen. And, you know, we got running backs coming back. I mean, we're, we're in good shape uh, with our skill positions. Uh, but especially at that wide receiver core, you talk about those four guys that you mentioned, and you know we didn't even know Tony Miller if he could even play here six months ago, and he became our leading receiver. Yep. Um, and also, you know, a young man that uh, really stepped up like Chichi did is Harrison Barton. Uh, he went unnoticed. Uh, most people don't really even know who he is unless you're really close to our team. But he's a senior wide receiver that just is a program guy. Came in here as a walk on, worked his tail off, and he had some big catches. In fact, even in the first game when a couple yep. receivers went down, he made a big catch down the sideline to put us in position to kick a field goal to try to win it at the end. Although we missed the field goal, there's Harry Barton. And he did that all year for us. So a guy that we didn't even know if he was going to be on the bus to travel at the beginning of the year to a kid that had significant time for us. On the other side of the football, uh, defensively, probably the highlight of that group uh, is the linebacking core. And three of those four starting linebackers were all conference selections. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, Colin Corcoran, uh, you know, one of the best uh, um, sack leaders in the country. Uh, he did a great job. Terrell Foster, of course, he's leaving us, but he, 
he did had a great year for us. Uh, you know, Ryan Gertz uh, inside as well, an all-conference player. Um, and then uh, Morgan Weaver, probably played hurt all year, um, but he was he was very dynamic, especially in some big games where he really showed up. So, And they're all coming back, uh, except Terrell. So uh, we're in pretty good shape at the linebacker core. Uh, some young guys in the secondary. Anthony Cantonese started a few games at, at corner, uh, had, had another new corner on the other side. Uh, it's a group that will be back. Uh, parts of it, I know you're losing a couple guys out of the, uh, the safety group in, in Mitch Lunder and Matt Splon, uh, but you've got some guys in the secondary who now have some real good experience under their belts. Yeah, we really do. And, and uh, you know, we, we talk about there's a couple other guys in Tamar Catwood and there's, uh, you know, Tyler Swinford. Both, both those guys played really well. Um, Kyle Coons, a kid that, you know, is a sophomore that played pretty well, especially on the special teams. And then we, we have a core of about five DBs or six DBs even that are freshmen. They're all redshirted right now that are really dynamic. So come to spring ball and watch practice because that, that's probably going to be one of our most competitive groups on the field. Um, and, and also we have, you know, seniors like Mitch Lunder actually is coming back possibly and, oh, and Patrick year. Lazara is going to be a senior next year. So there's there's going to be some competition where some of those guys might not even be on the field uh, unless they have great spring practices. A defensive line that was solid throughout the year, Tyler Kubler on the end, and that's going to get uh, boosted by the return of Kyle English who had to sit up the, the last year with an injury. Yeah, he's still got two years to go. I mean, he's a guy that's missed two seasons now on freak injuries, but um, if he comes back, he'll be one of the best in the league again. And we have Toby Frisbee back, and we have um, Tyler Kubler back, and we, and we have some other guys, Big Mike, Guy You Baby is back. And, you know, so you talk about these guys, another year of experience. These guys need to grow and get a little bit bigger and stronger, um, but they're very athletic. So we got to get them off blocks, get them off the big guys, because um, then they can really do some damage inside. Uh, as we start looking forward, spring practice, not that far away when you really think about it. Uh, what's the, what are, what are you going to try to get out of the guys in the, this break before spring practice to get them into spring? And, and how do you prepare them to get going in spring and really pick up where you left off? Yeah, I think there's three things that we're really, really focused on this, this spring, is, uh, well, this winter especially. Is the first one is we've got we to gotta get some size. We have got to be bigger. Um, you know, we're a pretty strong football team and pretty fast football team, but we need to get size is critical. Our guys had trouble keeping weight on. Um, I wish that was the case for me, but uh, we really have some guys that, that you know, are great players, like a Colin Corcoran, like a Jarrett Wood. These guys, I mean, they got bodies that will hold 250, 260 pounds at linebacker and still can run. So that's what we're trying to do is get that next year of maturity. The second thing is we got to create some competition in practice. That guys definitely have to fight for their jobs. That creates a, a higher level of practice. And then the third thing is we got to keep our kids healthy. I mean, that's the number one thing. Um, you know, I think I might put Kyle English and Theo Burkett in bubble wrap for the next <laughs> six months. But uh, anyway, that's that's what we're looking for is competition, um, getting as big as we possibly can in the weight room, and then uh, creating that creating that uh, atmosphere around us where we're not getting hurt. And uh, now it's it, the, sh the everything has shifted now for you to recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, you're out on the road a, a lot, trying to find some new guys to come in for this recruiting class. What are the things, as you get on the road and are talking to kids and talking to coaches, what are the things that you want to see out of uh, high school players that you're going to bring into this program? Who are you looking for? Well, we're really looking for kids who really, truly want to be here. Um, you don't want a kid to come in here that, that's a really good athlete and he's heavily recruited, but he wishes he was somewhere else. We want kids that want to be completely dedicated to our program. Um, you know, it, it's a body of work in our program. We sell it that way. It is that way. Um, our kids, we want them in here for five years. And uh, that's what we've recruited. Um, and we need just great athletes. We need kids that can play multiple positions um, if we need be. And, and we need some size. We need to continue to get big kids in here, um, both the offensive and defensive line. So that's kind of our primary area. Uh, we'll find a couple junior college kids that maybe help us in a couple positions. But really, it's the best high school kids that we can get our hands on with the money that we have um, in and around the Midwest. Well, it's going to be fun to see what the Warriors look like in spring practice. And hey, that season opener of 2014, Really not that far away. It's just around the corner for the Warriors. When we come back, we're going to take one last look at the final game of the regular season for the Warriors, a game up in the Metrodome against Concordia St. Paul. Welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. Coach Sawyer, one last chance to look at how the Warriors looked in 2013 as we go through some highlights from the Warriors game against Concordia St. Paul. All right, Coach, we're going to start where else but the opening kickoff of the game. Chichi Ojika taking this one back. Yeah, he had a great year uh, returning kicks for us. He uh, was one of the tops in the league. And uh, he, you know, another one, great one here out to the you know 38-yard line to get it started. 
<coughs> Special teams played well for the Warriors. There's Jeremy Newman. Uh, he had a couple really, really good kicks, including this one here. Yeah, he did a nice job for us all year. He ended up second in the league in punting, and uh, uh, on this particular day indoors, he really did a nice job. Warrior defense swarming all over the ball all day, getting a, a stop in the backfield in here with Concordia trying to go in. Uh, another big stop. Yeah, our guys, when you're doing things right, we're a very good defense, and, and uh, at times we just got to continue to work our hard on that off, off the offseason to get more people to the football. Jack Nelson with the football here. He's going to go way down the field, and you know what? Sometimes flags can be your best friend. Pass interference on that one <clears> gives <throat> the Warriors great field position. Now back on defense. Patrick Lazar picking off the pass. Yeah, Pat had a good year back playing safety for us. You know, here's a junior captain uh, was was involved with a lot of big plays throughout the year for us. Gives the ball back to the Warriors and Jack Nelson going downfield. That's Zach Olstead. Yeah, he's a redshirt freshman uh, from just down the street down here, Fillmore Central, and uh, he really uh, came out big for us the entire year, uh, filling in after Ish went down with an injury. Warriors on the move again. This is a great catch by Alex Jensen to get a first down. Well, it's two weeks in a row because he had that touchdown against uh, um, Augie the week before as well. Same kind of pass. Great awareness to stretch out, get that first down. Now the Warriors back on defense, good pursuit to the ball. And there's, there's seven hats from Winona State right at the football. Yeah, it did a nice job. You know, Toby Frisbee and Parker Detchens and inside linebackers, uh, Ian Murray and, and Ryan Gertz on that play. Here's freshman Anthony Cantonese busting this bubble screen. Yeah, it's, a tough, it's tough out there, you know. He's not a very big kid, but uh, he's very physical and likes to play that way and, and made a big play. Now here, that's Colin Corcoran getting to the quarterback. Yeah, I think, I don't know when he ended up in the country, but you know, in the top ten in the country in sacks, so he really, really had a big year for us, and I think he was one of the leaders in the league as well. Yep, second in the league, had nine sacks on the year. Now Anthony Resnick, he's the guy who's going to be back next year, just a junior getting some good yardage right here. He's a tremendous talent. He played defense for a year, came back to the offense. Uh, you see him here, he's got good open field skills. Um, you know, played behind Chi Chi, but you know, he'd have played even more, uh, but he sat out six games with a hamstring injury. Good to see him get some yardage here. And now, a little play fake. Jack Nelson, he's gonna run for some himself. Yeah, I'd like to see him just go out of bounds here, but he was working <laughs> to get the first down, so he'll figure that out as he goes through. Warriors going in. This is a touchdown pass to Alan May, just a great pass and catch. Yeah, watch him set up. Uh, he's got perfect mechanics on his throw. Um, doesn't take the ball long to get out there. Defensively for the Warriors, good pursuit all day, like we've mentioned. Not letting the running back get anywhere. Yeah, I see. You can you can tell when guys are running. That's Toby Frisbee, you know, kind of hog tying the guy there as he's running by. I'd like to see him tackle his legs instead of jumping up on top of <laughs> him, but it still works. Jack Nelson, the shotgun here, moving around. Well, buy some time. That's a pass to the sidelines. Yeah, find Tony Mueller. It always works. That's right. Just the way you drew it up. <laughs> now, again, the play action going down the field. Yeah, another big catch there by Alex Jensen. Uh, you know, he had over 20 catches this year as a tight end. That's big for us. Uh, really has matured into a very, very good uh, uh, tight end. Jack under center this time. You can just get the ball out right away to Tony Mueller, and he can make some things happen after the catch. I asked him, actually, when he came off the field, he touched all the bases as he was running around there. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he was running a triple here. He'd go around, and, okay, there's, there's first. I'm going to hang a left. Okay, there's second. Down the sideline. We were giving him a hard time. But big play for Tony. Now, Alex Jensen catching a touchdown pass here. Great play action and wide open in the end zone. Yeah, again, Jack, just get him, get him enough time. Uh, he can find open receivers and, doesn't like, again, a great arm to get the ball inside on the touchdown. This one, Anthony Frisbee, again, getting to the quarterback and bringing him down. Yeah, you look at it again. It's funny how you watch him, and, he, you know, he just gets a hold of the guy, jumps up on his back, and brings him to the ground. And <laughs> fun for those kids that grew up in the Minneapolis area. Absolutely. Here, a handoff that goes nowhere. Yeah, again, uh, guy's tough inside. Uh, Parker Detchens coming off a block. Uh, making a tackle for a loss there. It's a big play for a senior nose guard. Warriors with the ball and driving, and Jack heaves it downfield to Alan May, wide open. Well, you can see what kind of vision he has. He scrambles out of the pocket, and he's still got enough ability to look down the field, uh, push his eyes up, and uh, find a, a wide open Alan May down the sideline, again, to set up another Warriors score. 
Jack under center. The play action that works so well this year. And look at that escapability, getting out of harm's way, able to pick up some yardage. Yeah, he's smart enough to get out of bounds at that point. So after 10 starts, he, he started to figure it out a little bit. But tremendous talent. It's been a fun year, Coach. Thanks for joining me. When we come back, we're going to sit down with a couple Warrior assistants, beginning on the defensive side of the ball with Keely Flood. Welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. I'm joined now by Winona State assistant coach Keely Flood. And coach Flood, this is your first year with the Warriors working with the defense. Uh, just tell me what this year was like for you uh, joining Winona State and, and starting to work with the team. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. First off, it was a great learning experience being underneath you know, Coach Braun, learned from him, Coach Barton, and Coach Curtin. I learned a lot about defense that I had not known before. I was in 4-3 and being a 3-4 was a brand new experience for me. The team apps, you know, things like that. I mean, the game apps here is awesome. The place I was at doesn't even come close to what it was like here. So all that aside, it was a lot of fun. And then the other part was the, the school and going back to school, being back in the graduate classes was, was fun also in its own way, to say the least. As a graduate assistant coach, what's, uh, what's your life like uh, during the season? Obviously, you have, you have practice, you have film, but you also have class that you need to go to. So what's, what's it like to be a GA? Uh, it means drinking a lot of coffee and <laughs> staying up pretty late at night. Obviously, I need to take care of what Coach Braun and Coach Barton and everyone else needs done first, and then sleep is kind of put to the side because classes, homework have to get taken care of too. And unfortunately, like I said, sleep gets sacrificed because of that. What's a, a normal day like for you? Uh, during season, you, you get in the office around six ish. We got meetings at seven, and then from there, we go eight o'clock. We start as defense start looking at what we got to get ready for practice breaking down tape for the next coming opponent, things like that, just putting together practice too. Practice rolls around, go through that. Afterwards, walk practice tape, break down some more. And then at the end of the night, if I feel like I can still stay awake, I start doing some homework too. So it's a pretty full day uh, every day for a graduate assistant. Yeah, to say the least, I'm always busy. Um, let's get back onto the field. Uh, you worked with the linebackers this year for Winona State. Um, you just talk about their play this year and what you saw out of them. You know, they, they flew around, they were a fun group, obviously some things we needed to improve on. Consistency was an issue this past year. With times we played some, some great defense, we made some great plays, and other times this, the simple things such as tackling, getting off blocks, we, we failed that, and unfortunately teams capitalized on that. Uh, going forward, uh, it's a group where a lot of, you have a lot of guys coming back next year, uh, a lot of underclassmen, a lot of juniors um, who are, uh, um, who are going to be back for the Warriors next season? What are you? What are you going to try to get out of them this off season to get them ready for the 2014 season? We have to get. We got to get them bigger. We got to get them stronger. We got to get them faster. I mean, that's the goal in every off season. And then just consistency and finishing too. I think that's big. That we'll be stressing this off season because there was times where we had some teams on the ropes and just didn't put them away. And we need to get that mindset that when we get to that point, we got we got to put the pedal down even farther and put teams away in the future. Uh, on, from, from you, what do you want to get out of this offseason? What do you want to learn and what do you want to become better as as a coach? I want to understand the defense better. You know, working with the outsides, I, I learned part of it, but now that I'm out of the season, I actually sit back and learn more about the D-line and some DB things and have a general understanding of defense better than I did just strictly from the outside linebacker perspective. And then obviously just recruiting, things like that, I was always need to improve in that area. Uh, how much of a uh, of a learning curve was it when you're going from a 4-3 defense to a 3-4 like we run here at Winona State? It was a very big learning curve. Now, I had the summer, luckily, to learn some of it, but even then, there's just so much with it. We, we bring so many different blitzes, and a lot of the stuff we do is actually called on the field. With the 4-3, it's a little more stagnant. With us, we were a lot more dynamic, moving around, a lot of moving parts that all have to work together in the 3-4. All right, well, thanks very much for joining us. We'll move from the defensive side of the ball to the offensive side of the ball when we come back. Ryan Markraft is going to join me to talk a little more Warrior football. Welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. I'm joined now by Winona State assistant Ryan Markraft. And Ryan, well, we just talked to uh, Coach Flood, talked a little bit about the defensive side of the ball. We're going to move over to the offense now. Uh, talk a little bit about the guys who go out and score the points, uh, and that's your group. You work specifically with the tight ends uh, and the fullbacks, uh, a group that really, really performed well. Some injuries on your side this year, uh, but a group that, by and large, really, really played well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, our group's obviously led by Alex Jensen. Um, you know, three-year starter for our program. Does a great job in the pass and run game. 
Um, early on, we had an injury with Ishmael Karan, uh, our starting fullback at the time, and Zach Olstead moved over from the fullback, I mean, from the linebacker position last year, and uh, really stepped up into his own and did a great job for us in, in the whole offensive game. Talk about Alex, he really became uh, a really integral part of the pass game. Um, caught over 20 balls this year, uh, which was by far his career high. Uh, you really came to, to, to depend on him in the pass game. Talk about his maturation uh, and what he's able to bring to the offense. Well, you know, biggest thing with him from this year over you know years in the past is, um, you know, with Alex getting older, getting smarter with where to go, reading coverages, uh, a lot of them get, you know, get open more than, you know, secondary and being more physical at the linebacker level, getting off block, you know, coverage and all that stuff, and being that big body that we always love to have. You mentioned earlier um, Zach Olstead, a freshman, uh, who played a lot at fullback uh, and had a really, really fantastic season in his first season on the field with the Warriors. He was a guy who spent uh, last year when he redshirted with the defense playing linebacker uh, and didn't move over to the offense till late. Uh, so he had to be a real pleasant surprise for you. Well, he was because uh, last year when I was a GA, I worked with Zach every day because he was on my scout team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I learned real quick, you know, with his work ethic and just how he came to practice every day, you know, even though he's working on, this, working on cards. Um, gave 110 percent every play, and you know that's exactly what we did. We made the move this summer. Um, you know, asking for help. What should I watch on huddle? Um, and I knew this would be easy for him just because of you know his makeup and how he takes the football. Uh, it's an offense that was very prolific again this year. Um, now moving forward, Jack Nelson's back at quarterback. Have some pieces back on the offensive line, including a, a first team All Conference selection, Vance Ross. Have receivers. Have some running backs. Um, what are you going to try to get out of the guys in the offseason to make them better? The biggest thing is we're going to focus on the same with the defense, finishing plays and uh, our technique. Uh, we felt at times, you know, technique, you know, kind of slipped every now and then. And we want to make sure, you know, we're masters of our craft and whatever it is, whether it's, you know, Jack reading coverages, uh, making all balls in line of scrimmage, fans with his pass set, run blocking. We want to make sure those guys uh, are absolutely perfect in their technique and they finish every play. Spring ball is just around the corner. It seems kind of strange to say that since the season just ended, uh, but it'll be spring practice before we know it. Um, in th those few short months in between now and the start of spring practice, um, you, you can't be coaching the guys uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one and working with them in the weight room or anything like that, but what can you try to do to get them into a better position come spring? Well, the biggest thing is just uh, you know, progressing you know, my coaching knowledge and all the other coaches. Uh, getting out there, learning some new stuff, doing our research, what works, what doesn't work, and uh, how we put our players in better uh, situations to win. What's the biggest thing that you want to uh, get better at personally as a coach? Well, the biggest thing is just my, me being in the first year as a tight end coach, uh, obviously learning the pass game a little bit more. Uh, you know, I've always been an offensive line guy. You know, I know how to run the ball, I know how to block the ball, <laughs> but, uh, you know, just learn different, different uh, passing concepts, ways to open up, you know, the feet, certain coverages. That's why I'm, how I want to really, you know, mature. Well, it'll be spring practice before we know it here for the Warriors. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for joining us every week during this football season. We'll see you next fall.